Each year, the press reports how the Jews the world over celebrate their new year. They also recall how that their country was attacked on that day in 1973. Many Bible students will be familiar with what the Old Testament taught the Jews about how the new year should be commemorated. But what relevance does all of this have for us today? Listen now to learn about how this provides us with hope for the future. The new year is commemorated by Jews in Rosh Hashanah, a two-day festival which literally means head of the year. This is the commencement of the new year. Rosh Hashanah is also a judgment day when Jews believe that God balances a person's good deeds over the last year against over their bad deeds and decides what the next year will be like for them. They like candles in celebration and eat specific food which emphasizes sweetness, such as apples dipped in honey. They also eat pomegranates because of a tradition that the pomegranate has 613 seeds, one for each of the commandments that a Jew is obliged to keep. This is followed on the 10th day of the month by Yom Kippur. This is the Day of Atonement, when under the law of Moses, the high priest made sacrifice for the sins of the people. It is now commemorated by a 24-hour fast and a day of prayer. The Jews also remember how that on Yom Kippur in 1973, when they were celebrating that feast, their land was attacked by Egypt and Syria. Although they repulsed the attack, it provided them with a stark reminder of the vul their vulnerability to aggression from their neighbours. Bible students looked with interest at the political implications of the conflict and viewed it in the light of Bible prophecy. In the prophecy of Daniel, chapter 11, the prophet saw events that would happen in the time of the end. These events are stated to take place in the time when God will set up his kingdom on earth by the return of Jesus to rule over it. From verse 40 of that chapter onwards, it pictures a conflict between the king of the north and the king of the south. On the breakup of the Greek Empire after the death of Alexander the Great, two of his generals ruled over the Middle East, one over the area including Syria and the other over the area including Egypt. By a comparison of Daniel 11 and Ezekiel's prophecy chapter 38, Bible students have concluded that these two kings represent powers backed by Russia in the north and the US in the south. But in this particular conflict, Russia was back in both Syria and Egypt. The importance of war in this area was seen in that it led to a near confrontation between these two nuclear superpowers. Since then, there has been a dramatic change in relations between Egypt and the US. The military ties between Egypt and Russia have ceased, and now it is the US that supplies Egypt with military equipment. Bible critics might have attempted to discount the truth of Daniel's prophecy in 1973, but the Bible has once again been proved to accurately predict the future, showing conclusively that it is the word of Almighty God. The situation that Daniel saw some 2,400 years ago continues to unfold before our eyes in current world events. In the last week, world events have once again drawn attention to the significant Russian military presence in Syria and to a potential conflict with the US. We do not know how the fine detail of Daniel's prophecy will be fulfilled but we can see clearly how a conflict is developing between the modern day King of the North and the modern day King of the South. It is this conflict that Daniel saw would result in God's kingdom being established on the earth. 
The Jews view their new year as a time of judgment, and on Yom Kippur they look for forgiveness. The Bible teaches that Jesus will return to judge us, but that it is through him that we can receive forgiveness. Both Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are heralded by the Jews by blowing the shofar, a ram's home trumpet, as it was commanded by Moses. The Bible teaches that this trumpet will again be sounded when Jesus returns to raise the dead and judge men. The Bible can show you how that when this happens, it will be the commencement not just of a new year, but of a new life forever in God's kingdom. Learn more about what the Bible says by clicking on the link in the Facebook post and read a booklet that tells you more entitled Hope for Hopeless World. It is entirely without obligation and no one will contact you if you do not request it. If you'd like to know more about exactly what Daniel prophesies, then please message us. Thank you for listening.